Hello, everybody. Greetings from Heart Care Foundation of India and IGCP Group. I am Dr. K.K. Agarwal, President of Heart Care Foundation of India, Patron IMA New Delhi Branch, and President Confederation of Medical Association of Asia and Oceania. You are watching yet another CME from our group. For me, this is 814th CME in the last six months ever since the COVID has come. And this time we are going to talk about all about management of fungal infections, CME supported by IMA New Delhi branch in terms of credit hours and supported by a CMA grant from Wallis, Wall and Ace. You cannot forget the word Wall, a company which is standing like a wall and the word Ace, everybody remembers today, Corona is incomplete without Ace. But the subject today is management of fungal infections and uh, the subject expert is a close friend of ours, Dr. Kaushik Lahiri. He is a professor and senior consultant dermatologist in Apollo Glen Eagles Hospital, Kolkata. He is the honorary medical director and senior consultant dermatologist, uh, Wisdom. He is the vice president of International Society of Dermatology and editor emeritus, Indian Journal of Dermatology. The fellow of Royal College of Physicians, Royal College of Physicians, Edinburgh, London, Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons, FRCP, Glasgow. He has received many awards like the American Academy of Dermatology Member Marking Difference Award 2018, International League of Dermatological Societies Appreciation Award, Outstanding Leadership Award with special recognition from the Rutgers State University of New Jersey and New Jersey Medical School Chapter of Sigma's 11, the Scientific Research Society. Ladies and all my dear colleagues, I present to you Dr. Kaushik Lahiri on his subject. And once his subject is over, uh, we will have an interactive session. We'll ask all the questions. You can also post your questions and we'll be happy to answer this. This is also going to be live on MedTalks YouTube, and it is also going to be live on facebook.com slash drkkyagarwal. Ritu, kindly make it live on Facebook also. Yes, Dr. Lahari. Thank you, Dr. Agarwal. It's a pleasure to uh, do um, this program with you. It's an honor as well. Thank you very much for your uh, kind words about it me and uh, with your kind help i'm just uh, starting my presentation i think i'm visible the slides yes okay uh, so i've already been uh, introduced by uh, dr agarwal so today the topic is management of fungal infection for the next 40 45 minutes i'll uh, just present a few uh, interesting things about it. And before we go to the subject proper and uh, of management of fungal infection, we need to have some uh, uh, primary idea about what exactly this fungal infections are and why this is so important that we are uh, speaking on fungal infection again and again and again. And uh, this must be my 60th uh, uh, or more than that, about 70 70th lecture and uh, the fungal infection I have covered in almost one fourth of my lecture, uh, I think um, I have covered that. So I have renamed as a dermatophyte and uh, uh, hey, I'm a fun guy and it's not that fun anymore. How big is the problem? The problem is so WHO once upon a time uh, before the COVID era used to uh, deal with uh, uh, like uh, diseases other than COVID. So in, in a pre-COVID era, there was a study in 2005, and they thought that the prevalence rate is quite astounding. It is about 20 to 25% globally. So uh, this kind of horrendous fungal infection, we, we as dermatologists, every day we, we uh, come across. So how big is the problem of yours? It's a global trend is about this, 20 to 25%. That is a burden of superficial infection. Can you imagine that is about 1 billion? So global burden of this statistic indicate that approximately a billion people have skin, nail and fungal hair infection. 
tens of millions of mucosal candidiasis, about 150 million has serious fungal disease. And invasive fungal infection, including invasive candidiasis, invasive aspergillosis, constitute changing and expanding public health problem across the world. These infections occur a significant burden on health care due to their association with harm, morbidity, mortality, and cost of care. Superficial fungal infections are the most common. As I've already told, the WHO told uh, a decade back, that's about 20, 25%, and that's a huge number. So this change in the climatic condition worldwide, there's several reports of intracontinental variability of the global incidences of superficial fungal infection. They are relatively more prevalent in tropical and subtropical nations like ours, and the heat and humidity is high in most part of the year. But this trend is also changing. This is the Indian scenario. According to the study, Indian population, uh, it reported that 27% dermatophytosis was 75%, non dermatophytosis 24%. So 27% is also quite high. Although the climate in India, this was uh, suited for various fungal infection, the data on burden of opportunistic mycosis is, is uh, still unclear. So this is the, the beautiful slide you can see from Punjab to Bihar, it's, uh, uh, it's a United States of India, what we call everything is different and so is a fungal infection, but not really. The fungal infection is huge, huge problem. The incidence of, incidence of candidemia in India is one to 12 cases per thousand admissions, approximately 20 to 30 times higher that of developed country, and that's not a very good uh, statistics. This may be attributed to suboptimal hospital care practices, heavy patient outload, and high cost of disposable resulting in suboptimal infection control. I'll, I'll come into details of that. And the several Indian studies, the pre prevalence data was 0.14 cases per thousand population of mycomycosis, which is 70 times of the worldwide rate. So if I, if I go to the uh, etiology, uh, it's a group of related fungi called dermatophytes and septic hyphae, we all know if we uh, look into the KOH mount, uh, we'll see microsporum, epidermophyton, and trichophyton. Microsporum mainly infects the skin and hair, epidermophyton, the, again, skin and nail, trichophyton, uh, as the name suggests, it infects the hair mainly, and keratin is utilizing the host. Uh, so this is a beautiful slide again, uh, of the uh, outlining, it's a, mm, a schematic diagram of my, microconidium, microconidium, uh, and also, uh, the microsporum species and trichophyton species. The classification, basically, there's uh, epidermomycosis, trichomycosis, and onychomycosis. Name suggests epidermomycosis means infection of the epidermosis. Trichomycosis means the uh, uh, dermatophytosis of the hair, and hair follicle, and dermatophytosis of the nail means onychomycosis. So classification, if it's a five major group, uh, superficial, subcutaneous, cutaneous, systemic, and opportunistic infection. For us, the superficial, the cutaneous part, we, we actually deal with as dermatologists. And there's a various classification of fungi, molds, is um, from molds, we have septic fun fungi, accepted fungi. From septic, we have the dermatophytosis, opportunistic, and dimorphics. For accepted, it's a jagomycetes, rhizops, and mycomycosis. Yeast, actually, that is Candida, uh, Trichosporum, Cryptococcus, and Rhodotorcula. Dermatophytosis can spread in human. It can be direct contact. It can be from animal contact, from soil. So atrophilic, zoophilic, or geophilic, or indirectly from fomite. So uh, this is the type of tinea infection and the characteristic we all know as dermatolo uh, uh, the dermatologists. But what I understand today, uh, the lecture will be for non dermatologists as well. So uh, it can be on scalp, ringworm, tinea capitis. It can happen in children, quite common in our country, rounded structure on the scalp, and there's a permanent hair loss. There's a favor, so the scarring alopecia happens. Some scalp ringworms are contagious. In the same family, multiple like, siblings are also affected. The glabrous skin is one of the commonest, the ring over the body, and epidermal, erythematous, scaly, pruritic, the classical uh, macula, the well demarcated raised vascular border with the central healing. But now the central healing is absent for some reason, I'll come later on. The, and the folds, tinea pedis, athletes, tinea cruris, interdigital space, pruritus, 
fascia, and white scales, groin, and the tinea cruris, circumscribed right ticket, the metus plux, etc. Invasive, this is again uh, not within, within uh, uh, the periphery of, of a dermatologist, but we have some invasive fungal infection in the bloodstream and frequently caused by uh, like a candida, cryptococcus, filamentous fungi, aspergillosis, fusarium, or mycomycosis, so less frequently, but dimorphic fungi, including coxaridosis, blastomyces, and histoplasma. So invasive fungal infections and their features, this is again, I'll not deal with in details. Uh, this is uh, a more uh, a physician's job. As uh, a dermatologist, we do not deal uh, with this much. So uh, the pathogenesis, overcoming the host innate defense mechanism is for colonization. That is true for any other disease. The natural infection is acquired by deposition of viable arthropods or hyphae on the surface of the susceptible individual. And dermatophytosis can survive solely on outer conified layer of the skin. And other contact, after contact of the whole skin, suitable conditions favor the infection to progress stages they involve a series of host dermatophytosis infection of the skin. The recent trend is really very difficult and we are concerned about it. And uh, classically, we, we thought of something, we read something in, as students in our textbook 25 years back, it's completely changed. It's not entirely in the summer and rainy season. It's now been seen in almost equal proportion during the winter as well. And my friends from Srinagar, they are observing increasing incidence of tinea. So there's something seriously wrong in the in the in our description in the textbook. Nothing is wrong. Actually, the fungus is changing in a, in a very significant manner. We are witnessing spot of cases of tinea facia, tinea pseudo imbricata. I'll discuss why. More importantly, clinicians are finding it increasingly difficult to treat dermatophytosis. This is an understatement. We are absolutely, we look like fools in front of our patients after a complete uh, range of therapy. It's not responding. And the dominant organisms, again, it is published in 2006, Rubra, Mentagrophyte, Plocosum, Tonsurans. Now it has changed. It has changed and uh, uh, the reach of the each trichophyte and Rubrum, most common, many studies, Tinea corporis and pruris, mainly in Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, all over India, Tinea corporis in Maharashtra, Assam and West Bengal, Capitis mainly in Maharashtra and West Bengal, Tinea pedis is common parts in Maharashtra, and trichophyte and mentagrophyte it, uh, is mainly in Lucknow and New Delhi. So rise and fall of mentagrophytes and rubrum, that is the most interesting factor that intrigues us. As students of dermatology, we always knew that rubrum is the main organism to infect a, 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 a skin, but not anymore. So recent train, the epidemiological transformation of dermatophytosis is a trichophyte and rubrum is, uh, is now passed. Trichophyte and mentagrophyte has emerged as the co-dominant pathogen, which has increasing prevalence in comparison to what was seen in the past. So that was published in our journal and a decline in the, in the occurrence of, of uh, uh, the downiform tinea rubrum also been observed. And uh, uh, what the evidence says, the evidence says the recent mycological studies has demonstrated trichophyte and mentagrophyte. It's a predominant organism all over India. Organism found to exhibit rapid growth, primary culture in the five to seven days, which is not there in trichophyte and rubrum. That is a responsible for widespread inflammatory lesions. So this is something disturbing. And the four mites of transmission of tinea. Now, this is interesting. Trichophyte and rubrum, we knew this organism survived so for less than 12 weeks in a towel. Trichophyte and mentagrophyte can survive for more than 25 books on towel. So can you imagine if we don't wash the towel, it can persist for six months and one week. And that has been demonstrated and that has actually been published in, in, in journal. The fact highlights the importance of disinfection of clothes has to be done more than 60 uh, um, a degree and drying in the sunlight, a sunlight considered to the most effective disinfectant for not only COVID, but for dermatophytosis as well. So this is one interesting study from the city I live in, that's Kolkata. And it's there in a tertiary hospital, this medical in the medical college. It was done in National Medical College by my juniors. And the study concluded that 
the causative organism agent is not again trichophyton mentagrophyte, it's something else, it's verrucosum causing the maximum number of infection. So situation is the beast is changing actually. This is really, we do not know why this is happening. It has been a superbug and we are like a, with a folded hands and with a knee bent, we are really helpless in front of this superbug. So emergence of it's almost 93.2% in India is, is done by metagrophites. So what are the triggering factors? We all know that the triggering factors are uh, use of intravascular are the catheters, uh, this mainly for systemic fungal infection, prosthesis, anatomical barrier. But for us, we see mostly with corticosteroid, with uh, chemotherapeutic drugs that suppress the immunity after, after the uh, uh, organ transplantation, patient on azathioprine, patient on methotrexate, cyclosporine, and uh, some patients with uh, AIDS. And uh, we don't see that much these days, definitely with diabetes, Hodgkin's lymphoma and leukemia. So the key points what I discussed till now, the past decade has been an escalation, definite escalation and difficult to treat recurrent as well as chronic dermatophytosis cases across all age group in India. Multi-center studies show that a recurrence rate as high as 60.4% in some centers. We are using the best possible medicine, still the fungus is coming back. 30 to 70% of adults access asymptomatic carrier. Remember, I'm not discussing COVID. I'm discussing simple fungal infection. And they are also 70% of the adults with the asymptomatic carrier infecting their family and friends. They don't know that they, they, they are uh, carrying this home. And uh, uh, so the, to continue the key points are the isolation of dermatophytal species, a major geographic variation as evident in studies conducted in different parts of India and American Academy of Dermatologic Guidelines now absolutely they are not true for what we are seeing. This was published two decades ago. Even the British Association of Dermatologists, they are focusing on tinea capitis and onychomycosis, not on superficial dermatologists. Treatment recommendation, the standard textbook, they have lost their relevance in the current clinical scenario. My association, we're coming up with the, with the recommendation, with the new guidelines and everything. And uh, uh, there are causes of this astronomical upsurge of skin fungal infection. The three, host factor, agent factor, environmental factor. So I love this slide. So environment has changed, though this is, a, again, a political term, political, uh, uh, like a statement in some countries, but definitely the weather is changing, hot and humid climate, Dermatophytosis occurred from infected human, animal, soil, directly by contact, go host everything. Again, the, the metabolic syndrome, all are getting fatter and fatter. The uh, body mass index, if you compare 20 years back and now, is completely changed, even uh, in, in a country like India. And immunodeficiency, comorbid conditions, skin barrier dysfunction, patient demographic, site of infection, everything has changed. Others, hygiene in a, in, a, in a country like India, it's difficult to maintain the diet and lifestyle, excessive washing. So uh, sun exposure, sharing, and increase, interestingly, excessive washing during this COVID era has led an increase of fungal infection in the hands. So that is also how it is, like socioeconomic status and presence of spores. Are they really seeing a, a resistance? Uh, not really. Uh, uh, fungus develop resistance against antifungus is a loose, you know, common, uh, always done by uh, dermatologists, even non dermatologists, that we are seeing resistance. But that is not being observed, uh, uh, established by uh, mycologists. In recent times, have we observed an increase in incidence of in vitro drug resistance? Not really. Globally, the in vitro drug resistance has not been proved, but we are observing it. So, resistance, technically, it means relative insensitivity of a microbe to an antimicrobial drug as testers in vitro. So there lies the, uh, uh, like, uh, the catch. And microbial resistance growth of pathogen is inhibited by antimicrobial concentration higher than the range since in the wild type of strains. But what we are observing is clinical resistance only. Failure of therapy or relapse or infection, despite appropriate therapy, I'll come into that later on. 
So what are the causes of premium treatment failure? That was also published in my journal when I was the editor in 2017, treatment failure, recurrent dermatophytosis, chronic dermatophytosis. What are the causes of treatment failure? Untreated and undocumented affected family members? We don't know. We never have the time to ask any of your family members are infected. Use of topical corticosteroid, we don't know. So uh, we don't ever ask that what the medicine you purchase from the local chemist shop and applied on your skin without asking a doctor, never ask. Resistance to antifungals, very debatable topic. Immunocompromised status, diabetes mellitus, atopy, intake of systemic corticosteroid, non-compliance. What are the changes in clinical picture? This is something I'll, I'll come into details because this is something really, really interesting. We are seeing extensive widespread and gigantic lesions. When we were students in the 90s or late 80s, this kind of tinea was not seen. Yes, it was not seen. Now we are seeing an unusual distribution, highly infectious and virulent, denying or dad or fungal infection or ringworm was not this infectious 30 years back. It lacks classical central clearing. Can you imagine? We always think of ringworm, right? So there is the worm is still there. The ring is not there. Now it is completely, it has changes its characteristic. Whole family is infected. When the family is coming, the whole family, even the, uh, 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 the tenant, or even the landlord, all are coming. More incidence of tinea facii, not only in babies, but also in adults, recalcitrant to therapy. So I'll show you some pictures which are not exactly very pleasing, but unfortunately we are, we are witnessing these in front, of, uh, in, in, in the front of our eyes almost daily. Uh, can, you, can you identify something seriously wrong in this picture? The patient has definitely used something. And what is that? That is a potent, steroid. And in India, unfortunately, for no reason, steroid is being mixed with antifungal and dished for your purchase in the local chemist shop. So here, after applying, you can see the steroid acne, and you can see the steroid induced try, the stretch marks. These are all due to the topical steroid, potent steroid, which is being added as a cocktail in that. It is not available anywhere in the world outside India. The same patient on the other side. So it's widespread. Only the border is there. There is no central clearing. And uh, you can see the acne, steroid acne. If you type steroid acne in the Western literature, it is due to consumption of steroid or oral steroid, not for application of steroid. In India, what we see after application of steroid, this kind of steroid acne can happen. So this is also fungal infection. Unfortunately, on a, on a young, beautiful looking lady's face, and what are the current changes? The treatment failure, recurrent dermatophytosis, relapse, chronic dermatophytosis, recalcitrantemia, one by one. What is the treatment failure? Patient not responding completely to systemic antifungal that is stubbing up in 250 milligram once daily, atraconazole 100 milligram twice daily for four weeks. Patient is not responding at all. And, and what is recurrence? It's again an arbitrary term, just like uh, uh, our arctic area. We, we call it below six, six weeks is acute, above six weeks is chronic. So within six weeks, if it recurs, it is recurrence. And more than six weeks, after six weeks, the patient comes to you, it's a relapse. But basically, all are same. Chronic dermatophytosis suffered from more than six months to one year. Recalcitrant is a generic term. What I have told you is a relapse, recurrence, reinfection. Persistence and chronic infection all are actually recalcitrantemia. And to us, for senior dermatologists, almost all the cases are recalcitrant. So when they reach us, it's almost impossible to get a virgin case, what we tell. The first time a tinea happening to some patient rarely happens. Always that patient is suffering for months and years together, and they're hopeless and they're coming to us. So uh, this is uh, the classical phase. Can you imagine this is a case of tinea? and the whole face is involved. So there's no ring, only the border can uh, be found sometimes. You can, and now you can see the border, you can see. But when you are looking at this person straight, it is impossible to diagnose this case of a tinea, right? Even a dermatologist can make a mistake. 
but here you can see this is actually a case of tinea and uh, but there is no central clearing this is you can see the concentric rings just like a uh, if you cut a, a tree this kind of ring you will see that means waxing and waning once it is done again patient is applying some potent corticosteroid again another ring is happening another set of infection so very commonly now on the face patients are applying anything and everything on face to get fair even male so this kind of infection we are seeing this is also unfortunately tinea facei in an adult so again if you look straight first you will think a butterfly rash is the patient of sla not really the patient is a simple not simple again this is a very complex case of superficial dermatophytosis so the current indian epidemic of superficial dermatophytosis due to trichophyte and mentagrophyte as by my friends my colleagues they published this as a molecular study and unique multi drug resistance clonal trichophyte and population distinct from uh, trichophyte and mentagrophyte or trichophyte and interdigital causing an ongoing alarming dermatophytosis outbreak in india so that was the breaking news and better understanding of fungal spores are needed to uh, uh, like a uh, mm, unravel all this mystery regarding this the dormant astrospores are stored in distilled water for 25 celsius for 24 hours they become conditioned to germinate either spontaneously in distilled water phosphate buffer basic salt solution more effectively in the presence of single amino acid and peptides 20% of the activated astrospore population underwent germination even the complete absence of exogenous nutrient and sufficient temperature and humidity are provided so we really don't know everything about it forget about covid we don't know everything about fungal infection arthrospore remaining viable maybe insidiously activated as a result of prolonged exposure to water increased humidity of the skin trichophyte and mentagrophyte arthrospore this is what is disturbing inoculated or isolated in human straight carnium can germinate transform into hyphae as long as sufficient humidity is provided the observations and data strongly suggest that arthrospores of dermatophytosis are potential sources of reinfection of exacerbation of dermatomycotic patients so i have told you that it is more than 25 weeks the uh, trichophyte and metragrophyte can survive and that this is a big study uh, uh, done for familial dermatophytosis 113 families 673 subjects so 373 percent that was 55.4 are affected by dermatophytosis crudis was the initial site in 76 percent of patients the spouse are always aff affected all family reported history of using the antiseptic irritant soap and detergent you don't know about the ph value of that soap and using over the counter drugs mostly steroid cocktail all affected families as a single bathroom and use of the same soap and stool in the bathroom and 52 families have a western type of lavatory in the home and 42 family has reported the practice of sharing towels so coming to the management of dermatophyte infection so appropriate antifungal therapy so this is a very very difficult topic education of the patient who rarely have time to talk to the patient spread of infection so fomite so importance of complication compliance of antifungal regimens uh, prescribed by the dermatologist and regular follow up and education of the masses and non specialists like non dermatologist and the uh, role of fluconazole and itraconazole fluconazole as we all know 10 years back 15 years back this was the only thing it was received if they approval in the treating of vaginal candidiasis or pharyngeal and esophageal candidiasis prophylaxis of the dag reduce the incidence of candidiasis and patient undergoing bone marrow transplantation or receive cytotoxic chemotherapy so fluconazole is very very popular and very effective itraconazole are mainstay now it can treat many fungal infection has said the approval for treating blastomycosis histomycosis and aspergillus and it has shown efficacy in treating uh, para coxidoidomycosis coxidoidomycosis and candidiasis we are interested about dermatophytosis and candidiasis 
In addition, it can use the profile axis in, in patients uh, uh, I have described in, in the last slide. In others, it offers excellent profile access in immunocompromised patients for any reason, broad spectrum coverage. And besides treating systemic infunction, it can also treat superficial fungal infection like onychomycosis, for which is at FDA approval. Fluconazole inter interacts uh, with uh, 14 dimethylase cytochrome P4450 enzyme responsible for catalyzing the conversion of lanosterol to ergosterol. As ergosterol forms a critical part of the fungal cell membrane, fluconazole inhibits the synthesis of ergosterol to increase the cellular permeability. So it works on the fungal cell membrane. And other functions include the prevention of endogenous respiration and formation of ESTs. The loss of ster sterols, they go to unparalleled with accumulation of 14 methyl sterols found in fungi and in the primary cause of uh, perceived fungus or static activity of fluconazole. So itraconazole, the same azole group that lanosterol must undergo 14 alpha demethylation catalyzed by fungal cytochrome P40 to become argosterol. This antifungal blocks the reaction of interacting of fungal cytochrome P40 substrate binding site. So impaired ergosterol synthesis to fungal membrane abnormalities. In turn, it increased the permeability. So ultimately, the two azoles both increase the permeability and the change in the membrane-bound enzyme activity. So this is the efficacy of fluconazole 150 milligram in, in the treatment of patient with valvovaginal candidiosis. Single oral dose is recommended as standard therapy uncomplicated acute valvovaginal candidiosis, global guidelines. This was there in the guidelines, but as dermatologist, we know as gynecologist, uh, many of our friends, they don't know the single dose therapy uh, uh, is not that successful anymore. Fluconazole has excellent absorption and glute persistence of tissues. Due to this reason, it can be useful in superficial fungal infection. The finding of a study showed the tinea corporis and tinea cruris is effectively treated 50 to 100 milligram fluconazole daily. Remember, we use 150 once in a week, but sometimes it can be used 150 milligram twice or thrice in a week. There are some Indian studies on that. And in children with superficial fungal infection, fluconazole is actually uh, uh, the use for tinea capitis. I'll come to the details of, uh, in, in case of children, in case of adult, in, in, uh, uh, in the later on. Uh, Antifungal agents, this is actually the classes. There's a polyene, ampotericin, nystatin, netamycin. Grisofalbin was our favorite 20 years back. Azoles, I have already told, that topically it is clotrimazole, econazole, miconazole, biconazole, sertoconazole, marconazole, liliconazole, very, very popular these days, even ibaconazole. Systemic ketoconazole is not available globally. In India, it is still available. Triazoles, itraconazole, fluconazole, voriconazole, posaconazole. These last two are reserved medicine. We don't use that regularly. And among the allylamine, the turbinafin, butanafine, and naphtifine, and others are capsophangin, mycophangin, amrolfin, tolnaphtate, cyclopyrox, selenium sulfate. So these are the classical uh, uh, standard textbook teaching for tinea capitis. You can use tabinafin or fluconazole. And uh, for tinea corporis, 250 milligram for one week does not work. Two weeks does not work. Three weeks does not work. It can be even six weeks altogether. And after that, after a gap of four weeks, it can come back. So it does not hold uh, water anymore. So these are the basic educations that you need to tell your patient, regular bath, regular laundering of clothes, washing and storing clothes uh, uh, properly, separately from others, avoidance of sharing of clothes, towels and soaps, avoidance of wearing bands, threads, drawstrings and rings, and losing weight in obese patients, that's a must. Avoid contact with pets. Avoid applying topical corticosteroid containing cream. I'll come into details of that. That is my favorite topic. So the therapy is chrysophalbin, fluconazole, itraconazole, tavinafin. These are recommendations by Rooks, Fitzpatrick, by, and my association, that is IADVL. 
So here you can see there is a distinct difference. Here it is one gram griseofalvin for four weeks. Our association recommends four to eight weeks because we know it will not be sufficient if we stop at two to four weeks as per Fitzpatrick. Itraconazole, 100 milligram, two to four weeks or 100 milligram for one week as per Fitzpatrick in 2014, 12. For our association, National Association, ours actually is the second largest dermatology society in the world after American Association of Dermatologists, American Academy of Dermatology. IADVL is the second largest with almost 12,000 dermatologists uh, as our member. And I was the general secretary. So I know how important this is. There are two school of thoughts and we need to uh, follow what our association tells us. And that is there in our standard textbook as well. Carbinafin, 250 milligram, two to three weeks, 250 milligram uh, for two weeks. That is also recommended by us. So this is again, uh, uh, so different antifungals, their effectivity. And in pregnancy, I'll come into details uh, under that. For pregnancy, all are actually C or D. You can see everything is written here. So if it is a recommended C or D, you cannot really prescribe. Only what you can prescribe is tabinafin. If it is at all needed, for the first trimester, do not. Topicals is enough. But if you at all need is tabinafin, and that is also pregnancy category B. And uh, management of dermatophytosis, uh, I'll skip some slides uh, here and because I'll come into details in that in, in the later part. So this issue, an expert opinion that comes agents in nine cases and the superiority of one class of antifungal over another has not been established in clinical trial. So uh, again, I'll skip some slides because this will be a repetition aspect that is topical steroid modified tinea. This is a horrendous story. Uh, tinea incognito is a mycotic infection of the skin and has been modified by improper use of steroid and topical immunomodulators such as calcineurin inhibitor. In a way, it ranges no longer diagnostic. As some high potency topical steroids are easily accessible over the counter and the products of non dermatologists can also prescribe topical steroid freely in our country, not in US, without any fungal examination. The incidence of tinea seems to be gradually increasing. The classic picture is the inflammatory lesion. I'll come to details in this next slides. With extensive widespread, unusual distribution, highly infectious, lacking classical center clearing, whole family is infected. More incidence of tinea facii, recalcitrant to therapy. Here you can see, and patient is using and this kind of, so, uh, is increasing any any kinds of uh, and this is actually a very unfortunate picture this girl is of 21 days and she got the first gift from her mother this tinea infection fungal infection and that too on the inner canthus that is in inner, inner side of her eye because her mother is infected can you see multiple concentric ring of tinea of a new, on a newborn, She's, she is hardly one and a half months. Very potent steroids are being applied and there's no uh, central clearing. You can't find any central clearing in these lesions. All over the body, all over the body. And it can happen even in a adult on the scalp. During our college days, we used to see tinea capitis in babies, in, in children. This is not a case of SLE. This is not heliotra This is not butterfly rash at all. This is actually fungus. And this is not a log of wood with some fungus. It is, this is unfortunate case in a, in a lady. So we have definite proof 
that steroid can completely alter the morphology, the growth, the virulence, and drug resistance. I'm not going into the details because that is a very technical thing, and we're not covering that today. And everything, steroid response makes fungus is less vulnerable to stress, and it, it actually behaves in a completely different manner. And so the global expert panel meeting on the topical treatment, they have uh, uh, denounced this. And prescription of steroid infective dermatosis, it should not uh, be a part of uh, uh, treating a fungal infection. And uh, the practice recommendation, the American Academy of Family Physicians experts recommended topical antifungal should be continued for uh, two weeks post-clinical cure. And in India, we are actually using for four weeks after the clinical cure. Systemic antifungals in, in the current context, with the current situation of dermatophytosis in India, a radical change in prescription practice have been observed. The majority of dermatologists in India using a combination of antifungal, oral antifungals, that is a disturbing trend, and higher doses of antifungals, a longer duration of antifungals, and other therapies even not approved by any of the uh, um, like regulatory bodies. So experts of the opinion that further recognize the role of higher dose of tabinafin, however, deserted the use of high dose of itraconazole with a non-linear pharmacokinetics. Experts feel that the use of systemic antifungals like griseofalbin fluconazole in patients who were treated with tabinafin and itraconazole had failed, but delayed the clinical response time, are requiring a longer duration of the therapy should be considered before this therapy. So uh, these are the adjuvant therapy as adjuvant therapy, definitely you can use topical salicylic acid and sometimes definitely uh, white paraffin. Uh, as stomatophytosis, there's a significant increase in transepidermal water loss and uh, specific ultrastructural changes. So considering these factors, experts suggested use of moisturizers as adjuvant and pruritus, uh, this moisturizers uh, can take care of that and antihistaminic you can add to that. So in spatial population in children, in, in pregnancy and in geriatrics. So uh, let us focus on these slides very, very carefully. In pediatric age group, it is relatively less common, fortunately. In one Indian study, only 3% of the population has reported. In recent years, the exponential increase in dermatophytosis has been noted. And uh, systemic therapy is advised only in extensive lesion. An expert recommend use of fluconazole and terbinafine in pediatric age group. Well, fluconazole can be used during infancy. Terbinafine is after two years of age. And uh, so fluconazole and terbinafine, fluconazole again, since baths in infancy, and terbinafine after, after two years. Monitor counts, liver enzymes, you need to know that. And the tinea capitis, terbinafine except ectotrix, as it does not penetrate the crane sweat and sebum secretion limited uh, uh, before puberty. All oral antifungals with appropriate dose adjustment should be used in children. And in case of pregnant females, so topical antifungals are minimally or not absorbed systematically, systemically, and therefore can be prescribed at any stage. But other systemic antifungals should be avoided during pregnancy. That is the rule because I have shown you all are C or D. The clinical studies say itraconazole have not detected any increased risk during pregnancy. I have not prescribed myself. Considering the risk involved in the Azole family in humans, the drug should still be avoided in pregnancy, right? So effective contraception for two months after taking itraconazole before conception. So the, if the patient is asking, doctor, I, I had taken itraconazole for my white suit fungal infection, uh, we are planning for a family, you should tell that wait for another two months. The experts discussing the consensus agreed that these recommendations without changes. So uh, amphotericin B, not used that much. Tabinafin can be used that is a pregnancy category B. Oxyconazole, butifin, and pregnancy category B, all other are C and D even. Postpone, nail, and scalp other pregnancy. Tabinafin may be given itraconazole late in pregnancy, but better not to give. Fluconazole, high dose pregnancy, it is category D. So let us not discuss. Avoid voriconazole in total in pregnancy. 
So uh, that is the thing, tabinafin in lactation can be used with monitoring as excreted in breast milk, but actually tabinafin can be used in, in children over two years. So still the tabinafin can be given. Itraconazole alternative therapy can be given, but I have not used again, I told you, itraconazole. And uh, so these are the things, tabinafin pregnancy category B better be avoided in first trimester. Fluconazole, less than 300 milligram in pregnancy category B, can be used after first trimester, more than 300 per week, this category C. So the same molecule based on dose, it can change its spectrum from category B to category C. For the traconazole, contraception for two months, what I told is to be advised. For elderly patients, that is also very important. The treatment should be individualized. The patient's needs, sight, and extent of involvement, the presence of comorbidities, and the possibility of drug interaction should be considered before starting the treatment. And topical therapy should be favored, but if not, you can use triazole, itraconazole, fluconazole. That can be given even, even uh, tavinafin. Daily fluconazole, there was a, a report uh, because 50 or 100 milligram fluconazole daily was advised. Now 150 milligram also daily. So antifungal textiles, there was some interesting report uh, uh, functionalized by bimetallic nanoparticles with, with uh, uh, silver and copper in different structures. And uh, uh, new squalene, I'm coming to the newer molecule that is epoxide inhibitor BB2603 in a spray formulation for uh, nail fungus is the phase two or phase three trial. It's still not available. Onychomycosis associated tinea pedis. And uh, the pharmacological properties and therapeutic potential amorolfin. We use a lot topical antifungal agents that widely used for ma ma managing superficial fungal infection. And without nail matrix involvement, you can use topical amorolfin. Amorolfin is a structurally unique, topically active, antifungal agents. It exhibits fungistatic, fungicidal activity. It poses a broad antifungal spectrum against dermatophytosis. And it interferes with ergosterol biosynthesis in two steps. And subsequent, the delta-14 sterol, ignosterol, is accumulated in the cell membrane. And the cell wall thickness is significantly increased, and it includes the inside and outside. And uh, the uh, amrolfin has a long retention time with a horny layer of the skin. And the clinical trials have shown that amrolfin cream up to six weeks results in overall cure and improvement is 85 to 95% of the dermatophytosis. So and amrolfin is one of our very favorite uh, uh, like uh, molecule. Open randomized study 465 patients with onychomycosis was treated with amrolfin 5% twice or twice daily. The patient were examined as monthly interval and during treatment one and three months interval completion of treatment results showed that a slightly better cure rate achieved with the twice weekly, and the overall cure improvement of 74% to 68% is a twice or once weekly, and the mycological cure rate of 60, 76%. In addition, the therapy is extremely well tolerated. So I can use uh, the use of oxyborol. May not be known to many, but it represents a new class of drug that is acts primarily by blocking protein synthesis by the inhibition of uh, very different to uh, uh, like uh, uh, pronounce leucylaminosyl transfer, that is tree transferred RNA synthesis. Premature termination of protein synthesis leads to growth inhibition and death of the fungus. And it has broad spectrum antifungal activities, including dermatophytosis, such as trichophyte and rubrum and trichophyte and mentagrophytes. So that goes the story of oxyborol, even tababorol, that is another one. It is a low molecular weight molecule. Penetration is easy through full thickness skin. And, but I have not used it. It is, it is approved by uh, FDA uh, uh, very, not very recently, about six years back. And once daily application for 48 weeks is recommended. So these are all interesting, even hydroxyperidone. So this is, uh, it is. We hope that these uh, my, uh, these molecules will come to India and help us in uh, fighting the menace of fungal infection.
So morpholins are also there and photodynamic therapy that is the latest. And though it was initially, it was uh, everybody uh, was a little uh, suspicious about it. It involves a systemic, a topical application of photosensitizing adents and selective elimination of targeted light, light to an appropriate wavelength, which leads to generation of free radical and subsequent cell death. So aminolevulinic acid and methylene blue are the most commonly used photosensitizing adent of PDT. These days, actually, laser is also being used for onychomycosis. So nobody knows whether this is during the laser or the heat generated, but photodynamic therapy is there to stay. And what I was telling, the exact mechanism is not known, but still there are various articles. When I first came to know about in American Academy of Dermatology, I was also smiling, but now it is from many good centers in US and also in, in Europe. Our friends are doing results is really good. Although it provides alternative traded option, but with, uh, uh, some success it is still limited. The future prospects as uh, confirmed as in vitro activity of uh, echinocandin, that is uh, capsophagin uh, against dermatophytosis, a recently developed novel antifungal drug that is AMI-1111. It fulfills the characteristic of ideal antifungal drug. Very exciting for onychomycosis as it had a pro very potent anti dermatophyte activity, low molecular weight leading to increased penetration and maintenance of good inhibitory activity. So let us hope that it will help us someday. And patient counseling, this part we completely forget. So I want to highlight that patient counseling is very, very important. And we should tell that two centimeter beyond the margin and two weeks beyond the clinical resolution. You understand? So how much it is, it's not important. You can apply two centimeter beyond the margin of the lesion and two weeks at least after clinical resolution. And wearing loose cotton garments, discouraging sharing of bed linens, taking regular showers, washing clothes and bed linens and hot water. These are the things that we rarely do actually. Drying up clothes, we rarely discuss this with patients. Wearing well dried inner garments, washing infected clothes separately, instructing patients to use teenage crews to wear boxer shorts, removing waistband and wristband, preferring non obtrusive footwear, dusting, with more weight mopping, vacuuming in the houses, uh, uh, very much advised. So, to conclude, we need to recognize and appreciate the fact there's a lack of documentation evidence of almost every problematic aspect that we have witnessed, the fighting of epidemic of superficial dermatophytosis in India. The way in India, can you imagine there is about 25% of Indian at any point of time are suffering from some fungal infection or the other. So that is much higher than the COVID infection. About uh, out of 140 crore so about one-fifth of our population are suffering from dermatophytosis. The way forward are large-scale systematic studies proving the association of topical steroid, especially the combination of topical widespread dermatophytosis, and just beginning to explore the resistant patterns. And if any, the antifungal susceptibility testing need to be done. And what is the genetic aspect or the immunological aspect that also need to be understood. And uh, it has been a well-absorbed phenomenon that among dermatologists, irrespective of the place, institution, clinic, best practice, the burden of such difficulty is growing in India. And it's a pertinent need of the hour to increase the understanding of the molecular mechanism of antifungal drug resistance and the genetic and host factors that makes us more susceptible to recurrent dermatophytosis. In the time ahead, we look forward to more academic exploration in the menace of the benefit of the patient and the dermatologist. So these are the gel principles to the treatment. And I have already told that strict avoidance of OTC product. So we need to about know about the drug drug interaction, antihistamine, elevate pruritus, counseling in the first is the takeaway. The last slide is fungal infection, common in humans and usually not very serious. Fluconazole, itraconazole widely used as antifungal agents. Not only have high efficacy, but many fungi, but display favorable safety profile. Amrolfin is another uh, antifungal agent with good efficacy with fungal disease, especially onychomycosis. It's important to use this agent judiciously to add in 
positive outcomes and prevent complication. So these are the reference that I have used in this. And uh, uh, this is my book uh, uh, on superficial fungal infection. At the end of the world, only two things will remain. That's cockroach and melasma for dermatologists. It's actually tinea. And uh, diamonds are forever, actually tinea uh, forever for us dermatologists. And uh, you can see the, uh, uh, this kind of attention. And we always say the fungi are forever. And uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay safe. And uh, over to Dr. Agarwal. Thank you, Dr. Kaushik Lahiri. An exhaustive presentation uh, will be of use to all people who were watching, whether they were doctors or they were, they were healthcare providers. Uh, we were live for both. We were live for doctors specifically, and our pictorial presentations was basically assigned to the public so that they can see if they have that type of a picture, they should contact their dermatologist immediately. What Dr. Kaushik Lahiri has basically talked about is importance of a dermatologist. And now a dermatologist a click away from you. You don't have to wait for hours together. You can do your homework. You can take an appointment and wait in his virtual clinic because these types of dermatological lesions are very easy to be seen. You don't have to, you, even, even if you want to meet Dr. Kaushik Lahiri from anywhere in the world, he is a click away. And what that's what going to be a change in dermatological practice and more and more ethical and uh, correct practice is now going to happen because of this COVID era. Before I take up the uh, questions of the audience, Dr. Lahiri, in this COVID era, uh, the COVID, we don't know, it is going to increase your uh, immunosuppression. It is going to lower your immunity for three months. Do you feel, A, that we are having skin manifestations much more than anticipated? B, in the post-COVID phase, we may see a lot of dermatological changes. Thank you, Dr. Agarwal. Actually, uh, dermatological manifestation of COVID is a, uh as a completely different entity and not covered today. But yes, we are, we are witnessing a, a huge, huge uh, increase in number of dermatophytosis, which are directly and indirectly linked with COVID. Directly, uh, uh, sometimes you know about the uh, COVID uh, toe and uh, the many types of vasculitis. We are already witnessing generalized rash. And this rash is not matching with any of our uh, known entities. And also increase in, in arctic area, increase in cases with psoriasis, even vitiligo. And just last week, there was an editorial for the first time in New York, uh, uh, our um, New York Times. And that editorial was, and there was a, a photo of the globe with losing hair. The, this is for the first time when, uh, suppose in the pre-COVID era, if in, in 100 patients, we have five or six patients complaining of losing hair. Now, out of 100, at least 30 patients are telling us we are losing hair. And that may be a, a sign of stress, of uh, 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 like uh, the future is uncertain, and all are homebound, and, but we don't know what exactly is happening. Everything, all the reports are normal, but still they are losing. The chronic telogen effluvium, they're losing hair like unbelievable losing of hair. And so all these are compounding and uh, to this, and what I have already told, use of disinfectant, use of hand wash repeatedly, sometimes more than what is needed. Some patients are getting a little paranoid. And uh, that increases uh, the load of fungal infection, especially uh, in a patient who is diabetic, who is prone to develop these infections. So I'm going to take some rapid fire questions coming from uh, various sites. And uh, uh, one is, he says, you have told about the rule of two that has come from the public. They want you to narrate it again. That has come from the Facebook, the rule of two. Yeah, the rule of two is uh, you, are, you should apply the uh, topical antifungal two centimeter more than
than the ring. Suppose this is the ring and you should apply it more covering that area and go beyond two centimeter. This is one and do not stop the topical cream immediately your symptoms subsides. You continue for two weeks more at least. So after the subsidence of symptoms, you should continue for two weeks and go beyond two centimeter of the affected area. So that is the rule of two. Uh, pharmacological, a pharmaceutical company has come up with super available itraconazole 50 milligram, your opinion please. Yeah, super available, actually SB, super available itraconazole was uh, our first time it was uh, there in Canada. It was there in some parts of Europe. It is still not there in the US and in Australia. Our friends from Australia, they were using for the last five years. And we interacted only, it is not only 50 milligram, that is equivalent to 100 milligram of usual itraconazole. But it actually has no role in uh, whether you are taking with, with food or without food. So with food, itraconazole, and with without food, itraconazole has a uh, uh, different ball game. But the super viable itraconazole you can take with food as well. Otherwise, this is basically itraconazole only. Uh, dermatophytosis with psoriasis over the inguinal region, how to treat? Yeah, better to avoid any topical steroid. And we can use the non-steroidal uh, uh, use like a vitamin D analogs we can use. And you should treat the patient primarily. The fungal infection should be treated. That time it is better to avoid uh, to use any uh, uh, immunosuppressants like cyclosporine or methotrexate. So first get the treatment. Remember, any infection can trigger the psoriasis also. Not only uh, uh, fungal, but bacterial as well. So you treat the fungus first properly then treat the psoriasis as well without a topical steroid. Then uh, is uh, something uh, on the treatment of seboric dermatitis, if it is anything new? Seboric dermatitis? Is seboric, there some... seboric dermatitis, there is nothing very new, but in this era of COVID, seboric dermatitis, there is a spot of seboric dermatitis, at least an increase of a uh, uh, 20% increase of seborrheic dermatitis. We really don't know why this is happening, if this is again stress uh, um, uh, related, but some patients with seborrhea and psoriasis may coexist what we call sebo PS or sebo psoriasis. And you can use uh, itraconazole in this patient, actually you should use, and you should use uh, um, a cold tar and uh, uh, topical steroid shampoo and uh, also you should use topical systemic antifungals in these cases. Any relationship between a fungal infection and SGLP2 inhibitors? I'm not aware of this. I'm not aware of this. So he says a diabetic patient on SGLP2 inhibitors developed mycotic fungal infection. Should yes. I stop the SGLP2 okay. inhibitor or not? No, actually what happens, sometimes it is uh, uh, more in uh, balanopostitis is reported. Some cases of increased balanopostitis. So what I tell, what we tell our, our diabetologist friend to change the molecule and go back to the previous molecule. So that actually helps us. This is Poonam Manchanda, fungus in toes for the last 13 years, applied steroid creams and medicine, but has suffered from nerve problems pain in arm, swelling in the hand, fingers, and stop taking oral medication, please advise. So the basic problem, you have applied steroid. So uh, when you're applying steroid on fungus, that creates a beast, which is really beyond control. And uh, uh, again, I told that getting a patient without uh, application of steroid these days is very uncommon because before coming to a doctor, Everybody will go to the local chemist shop. Does that habit has to change? In any developed country, you need to go to, before I go to a GP, even go to a nurse. Here, anybody can go to a chemist shop. There, no topical steroid is available over the counter, not even hydrocortisone. In India, the strongest 
steroid is available for you uh, a very uh, difficult condition but the uh, nerve problem i cannot treat but the fungal problem definitely i'll be able to help you my last question which has come is that coexisting vitiligo with a fungal infection yes treat both there's absolutely no problem for vitiligo we have excellent uh, phototherapy that is uh, uh, narrow band uh, uh, ultraviolet b we use and we do not use topical steroid these days mainly all over the body we can use topical calcineurin inhibitor like tacrolimus and on face on on a baby very uh, tender skin on on eyelids we can use pimecrolimus so these actually will not make the skin thin and you can use uh, uh, any systemic and topical antifungals uh, quite comprehensively very effectively and uh, very confidently there is absolutely no problem in treating this too so that's all for today uh, let me summarize one thing that do not get misleaded by quacks who may just be giving you a combination of a topical steroid with other things which may harm you over a period of time in the post in the during and post covid era you have now dermatologists available all over your gp can call a specialist on a telemedicine and consult all three of you can consult on a click away you don't have to go to calcutta bangalore or mumbai to show to a specialist you can your gps now will be more confident you can show to any doctor and if you find kashik lahri you will find in every corner of the country you will find people like kashal lahri who are available to you to treat you to take care of you and if you are a non dermatologist doctor it's easier for you to now consult your from your dermatologist colleague about any complication which you are facing even you don't need to be even in a hospital attachment you can be available as a, in any hospital in a click away you can have a dermatologist on call they don't have to come only for one patient and visit the patient unless they actually want to see a lesion which may be in how many percentage you actually need to see a patient if telemedicine is not available out of 100 uh actually telemedicine has increased from 2% to 86% these days so that has changed during the covid era and uh, it is a boon really it is really uh, a great help from many of our patient who cannot come to the clinic even not for covid reason maybe a very se- senior person and uh, is unable to come to a clinic so telemedicine is helping dermatologist a lot uh, in this era. so uh, let me uh, thank dr kashik lahri to be here for his wonderful talk and uh, the link is available to all of you you can watch it again and again and even the public can watch it again and again and get treated get treated get treated 25% of the people may be having a fungal infection and they may be living a depression may be the cause of this uh, Uh, fungal infection may be the cause of depression in them and now you have heard that it is manageable curable treatable that's all for today we will be back with one more show with all of you let me thank dr koshik larry to be here and all my viewers at 9 o'clock who are now still watching the program enjoy your program order your dinner and eat it on your dining table Thank you very thank much. You. Thank safe. you, Dr. Agarwal, for this wonderful, being a wonderful host. Thank you very much.